dear students welcome back in the previous session we have finished the right atrium and also some of the schematic representations of the heart chambers in this session we are going to deal with the right ventricle in the schematic representation this is the right ventricle here which is a triangular chamber which receives blood from the right atrium to the right atrium and um, pumps blood to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk okay so this is the right atrium uh, so right ventricle here and this the line of incision the line of incision is this is the part of line of incision to expose the internal features of the right ventricle this is the line of incision okay and so here in this also we can see the coronary sulcus externally and the anterior interventricular septum which divides the um right ve ventricle with that of the left ventricle okay now the same uh, right ventricle we are going to see now in the oblique heart okay so this is the right ventricle so this is the triangular chamber this is the triangular chamber which receives blood from the right atrium and which is uh, pumps to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk this is the pulmonary trunk okay and this uh, right ventricle forms the major part of the sternocostal surface major part of the sternocostal surface and a small part of the diaphragmatic surface not border it forms the small part of the diaphragmatic surface and the majority of the inferior border is formed by this right ventricle only okay these are the features we can see externally Uh, in the case of uh, right ventricle and the other features or uh, external features of the right ventricle are the right ventricle has two surfaces as you know that this is the anterior sternocostal surface and the inferior diaphragmatic surface okay and the interior it has two parts interior it has two parts that we will see in the internal structure of the right ventricle yes now here comes the internal structure of the right uh, ventricle this part is the right ventricle here and this is the right atrium and this part is the right auricle okay here this internal surface is having two parts one is the inflowing part that means the blood which is coming from the right atrium to the right ventricle so that means so here you can see the opening here you can see the opening here and which is guarded by the tricuspid valve this is the valve which is guarded by the tricuspid valve so that is the inflowing part inflowing part and other one is the outflowing part so this is the outflowing part so in the outflowing part what will happen the blood which is received from the right atrium that one is pumped to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk so the blood which is going out of the right ventricle is the outflowing part okay 
how many parts it is having it is having two parts one is the inflowing part and another one is the outflowing part now we will see the inflowing part here and the outflowing part in detail so the inflowing part is rough if you can see this uh, thing this is the all these things are the inflowing part the inflowing part is rough due to the presence of muscular ridges you can see here it is not smooth some uh, elevations like depressions like uh, some of the muscular ridges are present these muscular ridges are called as trabeculae carni what do you call as trabeculae carni so these ridges are called as trabeculae carni so the rough the roughness of this um, inflowing part is due to the presence of muscular ridges these muscular ridges are called as trabeculae carni okay and it develops from so this part is develops from the primitive ventricle of the heart tube that means from the embryonic that is embryologically it is developed from the primitive ventricle of the heart tube and coming to the um, outflowing part this is the out, outflowing part if you can see this outflowing part this outflowing part is smooth okay and it forms an upper conical shape so this is the upper conical part of the right ventricle where it gives rise to the pulmonary trunk okay so this outflowing part is also called as infundibulum infundibulum of the right ventricle the outflowing part or infundibulum is smooth and it forms an upper conical part of the right ventricle which gives rise to the pulmonary trunk okay and this one develops from the bulbous cordis this one develops from bulbous cordis that is also an embryological concept so that we will see in embryology so it develops from the bulbous cordis and this outflowing part and the inflowing part are separated by a muscular ridge the outflowing part and this one is the outflowing part and this one is the inflowing uh, sorry this one is outflowing and inflowing these two parts are separated by a muscular ridge called as supraventricular ridge so here you can have this supraventricular ridge which are separated separating the uh, inflowing part and the outflowing part okay so this one is situated between the tricuspid and the pulmonary orifices this ridge is present between the um, tricuspid and the pulmonary valves orifices we can call it as so next this interior shows so now we have seen the two parts one is the inflowing and outflowing part and these two are separated by a muscular ridge called as um, supraventricular crest okay and this interior shows two orifices that means two openings one is the tricuspid or atrioventricular tricuspid orifice so this is the orifice through which the blood from right atrium enters into the left atrium so left ventricle okay next another orifice is the pulmonary orifice and this pulmonary orifice uh, is guarded by the pulmonary wall whereas the tricuspid opening is um, guarded by tricuspid wall so this is the tricuspid wall so this tricuspid wall is guarding the orifice and it maintains only the unidirectional flow of blood okay so these are the two orifices present uh, in interior 
portion of the right ventricle okay now so the interior of the inflowing part the interior of the inflowing part now we will see only the interior of the inflowing part the interior of the inflowing part shows trabeculae carniae that is the muscular ridges the roughened portions um, of the interior part of the right ventricle is called as trabeculae carniae and these are arranged these muscular ridges are arranged in three types one is uh, ridges or fixed elevations and another one is the bridges having two fixed ends but free at the center and uh, other one is the pillars so here you can see the pillars pillars what you means here the pillar is like this pillars or like this that means one end is attached and one end is free okay now coming to the uh, bridges in the case of bridges what will have uh, bridges having um, two fixed ends that means it is having a fixed end here and on the other side but at the center it is free so this is one kind of arrangement and uh, ridges or fixed elevations in this case what will happen so the entire part of the that muscular ridge is attached to the base so there, there is no any other free ends are present like that this trabeculae carniae are arranged in the interior part of the inflowing part of the right ventricle okay so these are the arrangements of the trabeculae carniae which is present uh, inside the right ventricle now so this pillars this pillar type of arrangement is also called as uh, papillary muscles these pillars are called as papillary muscles in which one end is attached to the ventricular wall so if you consider this one is the ventricular wall one end is attached to the ventricular wall whereas the other end is connected to the cusps of the tricuspid wall so the other end is connected to the cusps so these are the cusps so this tricuspid valve is having three cusps one is the anterior cusp another one is the posterior cusp which is present the same way on the behind and next one is the septal cusp this one is the septal cusp so three cusps are present one is the anterior cusp next one is the posterior cusp and the septal cusp so all these three cups cusps are attached to the papillary muscles or attached to the papillary muscles by cordae tendineae so these if you can see these fibers so these are attaching both the cusp as well as the papillary muscles so these are the connections these pillars with one end attached to the ventricular wall and the other end connected to the cusps of the tricuspid wall by a structure called cordae tendineae okay so in the interior structure of the uh, right ventricle there are three types of um, uh, papillary muscles are present one is uh, anterior so these are the anterior papillary muscles and next one is the posterior papillary muscles and another one is the septal papillary muscles so one is anterior papillary this one is posterior papillary and this one is the septal papillary muscles okay so there are three types of papillary muscles anterior papillary posterior and the septal papillary muscles okay out of these three papillary muscles 
द एंटीरियर मसल इज लॉर्जेस्ट दट इज द एंटीरियर पैपुलरी मसल्स और लॉर्जेस्ट ओके एंड द पोस्टीरियर और इंफीरियर मसल इज स्मॉल सो द पोस्टीरियर वन हियर यू कैन सी दिस posterior or inferior muscle is smaller and irregular whereas this septal here you can see this the septal papillary muscles are divided into small nipple like structures okay and each papillary muscle if you see each papillary muscle the ends of each papillary muscles the ends of each papillary muscles are uh, is attached by chordae tendineae is attached by chordae tendineae to the contiguous sides of the two cusps so that means by the side side by side st structures of the two cusps okay uh, this is the attachment of the uh, papillary muscles with that of the cusps why the structure is uh, Uh, attached to the is here this is an orifice isn't it and why these um, cusps are attached to the papillary muscle so it performs an important function that is it maintains the unidirectional flow that means so once the blood enters uh, from right atrium to the left atrium is a left vein right ventricle so the blood will not uh, flow back so because of the closure of this tricuspid valve so sometimes what happens if there is just um, uh, think that if this uh, cardinate tendine is not present is not present what will happen so the, once the blood enters into this um, right uh, ventricle what will happen after the contraction of this right ventricle the blood has to pump to pulmonary trunk isn't it so if if that coordinate tendine is not present so what will happen after closure of this orifice once the pumping of the uh, right ventricle so the, uh, the blood um the inside the ventricle it creates some pressure so the pressure will move on to the all the directions isn't it so once the blood which enters into this so it is preventing the back flow isn't it so if cardiac tendine is not present what will happen so the blood again it will uh, cause some pressure on this tricuspid valve there may be a regurgitation so the valve is present like this so what will happen if pressure is obtained so this valve may open into the right uh, atrium again so there may be a chance of um, blood flowing into the right atrium again so to prevent this what will happen these cusps are um, uh, attached to the chordae tendine of the papillary uh, to the papillary muscles not to regurgitate not to regurgitate into the right atrium that is the main function of this chordae tendineae isn't it okay so now next next one is the septomarginal trabeculae is present that is the called as moderate band and it is a muscular ridge so you can see this um, septo marginal trabeculae it is a moderator band so this one is the septo marginal band okay trabeculae we can call it as septo marginal trabeculae is a muscular ridge extending from the ventricular septum this is the ventricular septum okay and uh, to the base of the anterior papillary muscles to the base of the anterior papillary muscles and it contains the right branch of atrio ventricular bundle that is the conducting system of the heart uh, fibers uh, or uh, present in this band okay so that is one of the important uh, aspect of this septo marginal trabeculae this septo marginal trabeculae is a moderate band 
and it is also a muscular ridge extending from the interventricular septum that is the ventricular septum to the base of the papillary muscles it is not connecting to the any walls of the ventricle it is this band is not connecting to any walls of the ventricle it just uh, arising from the interventricular septum and it is attaching to the base of the anterior papillary muscle okay and it contains right branch of the atrioventricular bundle okay and the cavity here the cavity in the uh, right ventricle is uh, crescent in shape in transverse section in it is crescent in shape in transverse section because of the forward bulge of the um, interventricular septum so this is the interventricular septum this is the forward bulge of interventricular septum the cavity appears as crescent shape in a transverse section like this so it appears like this because of the anterior bulge or the forward bulge of the interventricular septum okay and uh, these are all about the interior of the uh, tri uh, right ventricle but as in the outflowing part so it is having a wall that is called pulmonary wall and this pulmonary wall is having three cusps one is uh, which is of uh, in semi lunar in shape one is the anterior semi lunar cusp okay and this one is the right semi lunar cusp and this one is the left semi lunar cusp all these three cusps guarding the pulmonary orifice okay so this is about the uh, after contraction of this right ventricle so the blood which is uh, present in the inflowing part is uh, uh, pumped into the outflowing part and it is uh, pumped out to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk so this is all about the interior surface of the right ventricle okay and the wall of the right ventricle so the wall here this is the walls the wall of the right ventricle is thinner than the of the left ventricle so thinner than that of the left ventricle in the ratio of 1 is to 3 so that means it is having 1 cm of thickness and the wall of the left ventricle will have 3 cm of thickness so this is all about the right ventricle in the next session we are going to see the left ventricle thank you